You might have seen this disclaimer at the start of some American movies. It's just one of those things that people see pretty often, but never really think about. But this disclaimer has a very interesting history involving the murder of Rasputin, a Russian princess, and a movie made in 1932. So in this episode of History Now, we're going to dive into the story behind the all-persons disclaimer. In case you've never seen it before, the all persons disclaimer is a bit of text at the start of a movie that basically tells you that all the characters are fictional. Now most people can figure this out on their own and they know that movies are not reality, they can differentiate the two. So why do movie studios even bother with all of this and tell you something so obvious? Well, it all goes back to a libel case from the 30s. But before we get to that case, we have to go even further back to 1916 to the murder of Grigory Rasputin. Rasputin was a mystic and advisor to Russian Tsar Nicholas II and Tsarina Alexandra Fyodorovna. Posthumously, he also became a muse to Boney M. <laughs> an influential dude. I could go on about his history and all, and let me know in the comments if you would like me to in another video. Otherwise, there's plenty of material all over the internet, he's really widely known, you can read up on him and find out about his crazy story and weird feats in your own time. There's a lot to get into there, but it doesn't really matter to this story. What does matter for this story is that on the 30th of December 1916, Rasputin met his end at the hands of a group largely led by Prince Felix Yusupov, who was the richest man in Russia at the time, and the husband of the Tsar's only niece, Princess Irina Alexandrovna. The prince and princess were forced into exile after the murder and the Bolshevik Revolution that followed shortly thereafter, winding up in Paris in 1920, and staying there for the rest of their lives. There was a lot of money to be made in telling Rasputin's larger-than-life tale, and in 1932, Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer released the movie Rasputin and the Empress, a fictionalized tale of Rasputin's rise to power and subsequent death. While MGM took uh, quite a few liberties with telling the story, it was quite clear that the films Prince Chagodiev and Princess Natasha were more or less Prince Felix and Princess Irina. The New York Times review of the movie also points this out, so it was not a secret to anyone. Prince Yusupov was allegedly quite miffed by this. He supposedly claimed that people would know that Prince Chegodiev was actually him. And apparently this was bad, not because it connected him to the murder, but because Chegodiev fails in his first attempt to kill Rasputin and only succeeds in his second, which was not how it happened in real life. You see, Prince Yusupov had made the murder part of his personal image, going so far as to write a book titled Rasputin, His Malignant Influence and His Assassination in 1927, which is five whole years before MGM released this movie. And let me tell you, this book was pretty detailed, with chapters dedicated to each step of the murder. In 1952, he also released a memoir titled Lost Splendor, the amazing memoirs of the man who killed Rasputin. So clearly this guy had no problem being called Rasputin's killer. The problem is suing someone for libel can be pretty hard when you've openly taken credit for the associated murder. So the story goes, he got his wife, Princess Irina, to sue instead. Regardless of whether or not the prince was actually behind it, it is a matter of historical and legal record that Princess Irina sued Metro Goldwyn Mayer for libel in London. In one part of the movie, Rasputin sexually assaults Princess Natasha, which definitely never happened in the real world because the real Princess Irina never even met Rasputin. In fact, MGM was fully aware of this. When they were making the movie, they fired a writer who told them that it had never happened and kept the scene for shock and awe. Remember, this was the 1930s. Princess Irina argued that people who knew her would clearly see Princess Natasha as a representation of her and would attribute the events of the movie to her real life, thus making the movie libellous. And much like the story of Rasputin, this case was kinda unusual. As part of the case, Prince Yusupov was called as a witness, and in true Prince Yusupov fashion, described the murder in great detail. As the Yusupov's lawyer put it, 
When Prince Yusupov stood there in the witness box and told you his story, there could not have been a living creature who heard it who was not thrilled to the marrow. Therefore, even though he wasn't prosecuted for it, it's now a matter of legal record that Prince Yusupov killed Rasputin. Though, who fired the killing shot is also disputed. Again, that's a whole other topic for another day. At the end of it all, Princess Irina won. The jury agreed with her, deciding the film was a libel. She was awarded damages worth about $125,000, which would be close to about $2.5 million or 500 million rupees in today's money, plus legal fees. MGM later appealed and lost. Now, just a little side note, you may be wondering why Princess Irina, who lived in France, sued the American MGM for libel in England. It turns out there's a phenomenon called libel tourism, where people will file defamation suits in jurisdictions where, due to the quirks of their legal systems, it would be easier for the plaintiff to win, and apparently England and Wales were hotspots for this activity at the time. It turns out that before this suit in London, she did sue MGM in the US as well, for a whopping two million dollars. But this case was settled out of court in 1934 after the verdict of the London case. MGM ended up paying about $750,000 to settle all of the suits the princess had filed all over the world. At the time, this was believed to be the largest sum ever paid out for a libel suit. In today's money, that would have been about $15,200,000 or about 1,034,800,000 rupees. Now, back to the main point of this video. When settling the suits, MGM also agreed to apologize to the princess and, very importantly, to publicize the fact that the character Princess Natasha in the film was purely a fictional creation. MGM also needed to prevent future suits of a similar nature, so the practice of saying that all characters are fictional and any similarities to real people were coincidental stuck. It was soon adopted by other studios as well, becoming what is now a very common sight at the start of American movies, the All Persons Disclaimer. Oh, one more thing. About 30 years after these events, Prince Yusupov tried to sue CBS for $1.5 million, alleging that a TV movie they had broadcasted also defamed him. It didn't work out. Thank you so much for watching my first detailed history now. If you found the video interesting or at least entertaining, leave a like and share it with your friends. Um, feedback is more than welcome and let me know if you come across a topic that you would like us to cover in future episodes. Make sure you follow us to see them.